Well, thank you, Paige, and hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Reserves Selling Out, Settling, or Succeeding. In today's webinar, I'm going to tell some stories about what happens due to the decisions made at three different associations, physically identical, but led by different boards of director strategies. Now, I've delivered this presentation a number of times to management company and CAI audiences, but never to one of our national webinar audiences. So we want to spread this message because we've been preparing reserve studies for 30 years so we can tell you with confidence what happens when your association chooses a particular reserve funding strategy. Now, most of the time, we tell you what's going to happen about your roofing or your painting, your asphalt, or those kinds of things. And as Paige indicated, this one's all about your choices, things that happen when you do particular things. Well, about 30% of the associations in the country we find are selling out. About 40% are settling, so that matches the, the poll. The, the bulk are in the settling mode. And about 30% are succeeding. Now. I'm not on the board of any of those associations that are clients of ours. They're making those decisions by themselves. And you might be wondering, what are the characteristics of decisions made by the associations who are succeeding? How can I join them? How can our association move that direction? And following up with what are the costs and real dollars of taking these three courses of action? Well, our job here at Association Reserves is to help you plan for the predictable. So settle in and join me as I help you see the future at your association. But first, a few housekeeping comments. This is, as um, I guess it's hard for you to tell that's live, but this is a live presentation and everyone's been muted to keep the background noise to a minimum. I want to point out a few controls that appear on your screen. I like an interactive presentation. I can't see you all. So every once in a while, I'll ask for your feedback, and the way to respond is to raise your hand by clicking the little hands raised icon in your control panel that looks like the one you see on screen. And if you came with a question, or if any time you have a question that arose due to something I've said, if I'm not clear, or if you just want to hear a, a deeper explanation, just type it in the dialog box in your control panel, again, similar to the one you see on screen. Paige is going to be monitoring that throughout our session today, and we'll select from those at the end, in addition to the ones emailed in during our Q&A session. And I hope you have some paper and are taking notes, but just to give you some peace of mind, I want to let you know that the session today is being recorded and will be uploaded to our website for future reference. Give us about a week. We will create and send an outline to all attendees who fill out a survey at the end of today's session, so please do fill out that survey. It helps us know what your interests are, what you felt was useful, and helps us tune and uh, focus our webinars to meet the needs of you, our audience. So without further delay, let's give it a test. Give me a hands raised if you're ready for me to get going on the presentation. Hands raised, everybody. Very nice, very nice. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to click to set all the hands down and get going on the presentation. And it starts with my world of reserve studies. It looks like this. The foundation of reserve studies is the projected reserve expenses, and it looks like those shown on this chart. And you can see how the expenses are significant. They're typically thousands of dollars, and they're scattered over the years. So some years have large expenses, and you can see some years have little or no expenses at all. And those expenses all come from the reserve component list, which is made up of component projects, each with a description, projected useful life, remaining useful life, and a current replacement cost. And that defines the fundamental problem. I wouldn't be in business without this problem that needs some expertise to solve. My clients, all community associations that we're talking about today, they have a stable income stream, but these big expenses, the largest expenses an association will face, are scattered irregularly through the year. So how do you resolve that? Well, I want to start you off today with something of value. One of the biggest mistakes we see our clients making is thinking that reserve expenses are surprising or unpredictable just because they're irregular. And that's the farthest thing from the truth. If you look at the component list, they're all 
very straightforward projects, all very predictable. We may not get them exactly right. For instance, that pool resurface may happen in six years and it may be $11,000, but we're going to be pretty darn close. These are essentially predictable expenses. So the second tip of the day is that when clients think that making 50% of their reserve contributions think that they'll be 50% funded, that's a mistake. Um, that's way off mark and let me explain by using that same chart. Um, look at all these reserve expenses. You can see a big one for $100,000 in about five years, uh, 10, 15, about 18 more years, there's about $130,000. Add them all up and it, you add all those up and it comes to a little over $900,000. Now with that much in reserve expenses, pretty much you'll need about that much in reserve income and there's no way around that. So when your reserve say says you need about $900,000 over the next 30 years, that's essentially what you're going to need. So 50% of that recommended contribution is just plain not going to cut it. Okay? The percent funded, the recommendation, all those have to do with margin and margin is small compared to the total cost and the total needs of the association. Okay, third tip of the day is to think that reserve contributions are for the future. Now, I, a lot of you are board members, so this is a tip as you handle the conversations about reserves. Reserves are not for the future. Reserves offset ongoing deterioration, kind of like the pace line that you see in a televised swim race. Now, choosing the right words is going to define the discussion and define the conversation. That pace line at your association is ongoing deterioration. Either you're keeping up with it or you're underfunding and your reserve fund is weakening and falling behind, you're getting closer and closer to a special assessment. So if you can define the conversation as uh, something that happens in current day term, just keeping up with ongoing deterioration, you're going to have a lot more success at your association. When you characterize reserves as a future expense, quite often human nature thinks it's a future problem, something that someone else will solve. Well, this is something you need to take a grip on today because reserve expenses, that deterioration is ongoing and predictable. You need to offset, offset that with ongoing and predictable reserve contributions, bringing it back to that stability. As you can see in this chart, those special assessments are very common among associations with the reserve fund on the left side in the 0%, 0 to 30 percent funded range. So it's all a matter of if you're keeping up with predictable deterioration and providing your association with enough funds for the projects that need to happen. If you're doing that, great. If not, you're falling behind and your association is falling into special assessment land. And that actually sets a stage rather nicely for our story today, a story of three associations. We'll call them Coastline Villas, Produce Heights, and Riverbend. See if you um, recognize any of these behaviors, if any of these three begin to sound familiar. And then I'm going to be able to show you where their decisions take, where their decisions take them through the years. So the situation is this three identical associations in the same neighborhood, different board of directors. This is going to isolate the what happens when that happens question to something that's very easily comparable between the associations. So each is 70 units, pretty typical, built at the same time 15 years ago. We'll call it same developer, same amenities, same sizes. Their assessments are $245 unit dollars per month, home value is about 350000 and they've kept their reserve contributions constant for a long time, figuring, you know, why change them? That's what the developer told them would be okay, so that's what they've been doing. And they're told by management, their accountant and their attorney that they should get an updated reserve study. They say, you know, right, someone's told us that before, but at this point in time they start to see things deteriorating around their association 
and the straw that broke the camel's back is that they went to a recent board member liability seminar and learned that a reserve study can help keep them out of trouble. So they all thought this is a good thing to do. They each got a reserve study by an independent credentialed reserve specialist. And they get the results. And this is what they find out. Not surprisingly, their reserve fund is about mid-range at 49% funded in that middle kind of uh, settling range and their recommendations are that they should significantly increase their reserve contributions to about $71 a unit. That's a, a big increase from their $16 uh, dollars per unit per month that they were doing. So on a monthly basis going all the way up to 71 from 16. So the question is what are they going to do? And that's where we get to the illustration of the three different associations. Coastline Villas. The board there thinks that the reserve say provider is out of touch with reality and they say that no association could afford that unreasonable level of reserve contributions. Their budget stretched thin as it is. There's absolutely no room for a $55 increase. That's flat out crazy. So they run up the white flag and say, we can't do it, we can't afford it. And they've got plenty of excuses, starting with, well, they'll just pretend they never got the reserve study. After all, they didn't spend too much on it, and the homeowners don't know, and yeah, it's just a piece of consultation, no big deal. And besides, everything's been good enough so far. Um, they don't want to raise assessments rock the boat and possibly increase delinquencies and you see other excuses on the screen um, you've all heard these excuses before so the bottom line is their opinion reserve contributions are luxuries we can't afford luxuries we are just coastline villas that's um, we're a simple association no luxuries here so they're just gonna do another year with their reserve contributions unchanged at $16.43 per month. They figure that's a future problem, future people will deal with that. Now our projection at this rate we project that they'll completely deplete the reserve contributions in about seven years and in my, from my viewpoint it looks like this cartoon uh, character completely oblivious and out of touch with its own dangerous and desperate situation. I had an association, I think it was just last week, that had a very singular expense seven years from now and it was so clear. I think it was roofing. Um, other than that, uh, they had a weak reserve fund and it was so clear to me that they just need to start getting prepared. They were unprepared now, their reserve contributions were inadequate, and I felt like I was a navigator on the Titanic telling them there's an iceberg smack in your path. You need to get ready for it. And the manager said, I got it. I'll communicate to the board, but there's only so much we can do. All right. Everyone with me so far? Give me a hands raised if Coastline Villas sounds like an association that you know, maybe your association, or with you sympathize with some of their um, excuses. You've heard those excuses before. Hands raised if you're on track. Great. Okay, that's Coastline Villas. Thank you very much. I'm going to put hands down. And we'll move on to Produce Heights. Their theme is, okay, let's uh, try and let's hope for the best. Their thinking is that they don't believe they can do uh, what we recommend, but they want to try to make a step in the right direction, make a, a step of progress and maybe not hit the bullseye, but at least hit the target, kind of like that arrow that you see. And so they're going to adjust their budget and they're going to go part way. They're going to increase their reserve contributions pretty significantly to $60 a month. And that's about a $44 per month per unit increase. Now they chose that figure because they asked us, well, how much would it take theoretically to stay cash positive. Um, they saw that their reserve fund was going to crash and burn in seven years that they didn't make a change. How much do we need to do to stay cash positive? And we said you need to go up to about $60 a month. And you can see it 
<coughs> excuse me, gets pretty tight after about the 25th year, but they do theoretically get cash positive, and so um, no margin for uncertainties, but theoretically good enough, and that's what they decide they'd try to go with. Okay, and then we turn the page to Riverbend. And remember, as a neighborhood, all three boards heard from the same uh, management team, accountants, attorneys, and all went to the same seminar. So they've heard all the same things, and so interesting, what's Riverbend going to do? Well, Riverbend's position is that they need to fix the problem and do what needs to be done. They heard this seminar on board member liability, and this is a board that is concerned about exactly that, board member liability. What's it cost? Well, they know attorneys are expensive, legal problems are expensive, and they'd rather um, consider raising their reserve contributions rather than get into legal trouble. That's their, their value decision. So they want to fix the problem and do what needs to be done. They're aware of the kind of destructive path that they've been on. They saw the projection of running out of money, and they want to get off that destructive path as quickly as possible and get their association on track financially. And that means raising their reserve contributions significantly, all the way up to the amount recommended in their reserve study. And don't think that was an easy or unanimous decision. They had a divided board on the subject, but the majority ruled in favor of being courageous and responsible, minimizing their liability, doing what the association needed. And so just another example that it doesn't have to be unanimous. All you need to move forward to make progress is majority. So what does the projection of the reserve fund look like at Riverbend? Well, with that reserve contribution plan, their reserve fund strength drops it's a little bit, wiggles a little bit, but uh, begins to grow and finally getting over that 70% point in about 10 years. 70% is what typically defines reserve fund strength. So they get strong in about 10 years and their reserve fund eventually stabilizes near the 100% level and we call that full funding. So this is what we have going on at the three associations. Coastline is pretty much sorry, we can't do it, we can't afford it. Produce Villas is let's give it a try and see if we make, can make a good enough improvement. And Riverbend says, hey, let's be courageous, it's time to do it right. And uh, they said, this is each gonna cost every one of us at our association $55 a month and um, we think that value decision at our association is worth it. We're going to increase the dues $55 per unit per month um, and start getting things right with respect to reserves. So what's it look like? Uh, graphically, Coastline kept the reserve contributions the same, so their total assessments could stay the same. And their rallying cry is we've now kept our assessments the same for eight years in a row, and we're happy about that. Um, produce Villas shouldered an 18% increase for their assessments, um, but then again, they had about a 10% increase a couple of years ago, so jumps in homeowner assessments are not totally out of character for their association. And Riverbend, as I mentioned, had a special meeting to tell the owners what was going on and why, and politically make it clear that a 22% increase was necessary, and the, what we heard was that five owners stormed out of the meeting and said they were going, they just couldn't afford it and were going to have to sell and move to a, a more affordable association. And uh, I'll let that settle a little bit. And that's just a reminder that it's the board's job to run the association. And it's homeowner's job to decide if they can afford to live in a particular association. And that was a courageous decision. Well, the story doesn't end there. Um, let's roll the calendar forward and take a look at what happens if we move forward five years and see really what has been going on with these three associations based on the strategies that they chose. Well, as predicted, uh, pretty close to right on schedule, the roof fails, and that was a project that was about $1,500 per unit, okay? So what goes on? Well, at Coastline Villas, 
that caused a special assessment of a little over two thousand dollars and um, it was a little over the fifteen hundred dollars because in the time it took to pass the special assessment they had some additional water damage costs and some expensive emergency roof repairs that ended up driving the price up produce had uh, produce sites had most of the money they needed but because the roof did fail one year early, they didn't have all the cash they needed, so they passed a little $500 per unit special assessment, which they could collect in time to make the final payment to the roofer on the payment schedule that they had negotiated. Now at Riverbend, they had scouted some roofers in advance and knew the project was coming up. It was not a surprise to them. So they'd already interviewed roofing vendors and were able to get the project done on time and on budget in advance of the heavy rains. And they have, as you can imagine, that type of a board there. They run their place with order. They run it in a peaceful manner. And it's a proactive board that communicates well. And the people knew what was going on and they were happy to get the roofs done on time and before it rained. Now, a uh, big element here that we need to talk about, home prices. Do the plastic on the roofs and the stories being told of the hostile things being said at the stressful special assessment meetings, explaining why the roofs were leaking, home values at coastline villas dropped about 5%. Uh, that translates to about 17,500. And remember, this is all triggered by a $1,500 $1, per unit roof project that got done late. So home values at Produce Heights and Riverbend, they are stable, things got done. Uh, real estate agents in the neighborhood know that those two places are squared away. Um, the roofing projects, as I said, got done on time. Uh, stability is the, the watchword there. And that $500 per unit special assessment at Produce Heights wasn't the source of too much tension. That's um, well within most people's ability to um, pay without too much griping and, uh, what do I say, weeping and gnashing of teeth. So one other factor, and this is an asterisk, that $16.43 per unit per month reserve contribution at Coastline Villas was about 7% of the total budget. And some of you may know that the FHA now is looking at a 10% minimum going towards reserves. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and major lenders are also looking at that as kind of a guideline. So if your association is contributing less than 10% towards reserves, your owners are not going to, in general, um, get favorable, or owners and prospective buyers are not going to get very favorable loan terms. Um, so attractive financing goes out the window. and when that happens at Coastline Villas or any other association that puts additional price pressure because people trying to get a mortgage are realizing they're going to have to pay a little more per month for the same mortgage than they would at another association. So let's look at the five-year costs uh, in real dollar terms. The green portion of the bars you see are the reserve contributions and clearly Coastline Villas made the least reserve contributions, but their owners basically made up for most of that with uh, most of the low reserve contributions with the special assessment. And remember, that was just a special assessment for roofing. That doesn't talk about the other things that they're unprepared for that they'll probably need to special assess for also. But where they took the biggest hit was from the drop in home values. Homes just plain were selling at lower prices than similar units at produce sites and Riverbend. It's a now in the neighborhood allows your place to live. Real estate agents know it. Prospective buyers know it. So at produce heights, special assessment plus reserve contributions almost came to the same total as reserve contributions at Riverbend. Not a real difference there. So um, not much of a difference in the dollars the owners paid to their respective associations, but um, enough to prevent home values from being affected. Now what I find interesting here is that Coastline Villas had the original objective of saving money. Remember that? They're the ones who said, we can't afford it. And they're the ones who ended up losing the most. Their special assessment offset the reserve contribution savings, and they shot themselves big time in the foot by failing to have enough funds in the budget to maintain the property. And that's their fundamental role as board members, maintaining 
the common areas of the association. So give me a hands raised if you see this uh, high cost that Coastline Villas ended up costing their homeowners. Hands raised if you're tracking. Very good. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I'm going to put hands down. Okay. What do we learn from this? What are the lessons? Remember, um, I think it was my parents told me this, experience is what you learn from your mistakes, but wisdom, the true wisdom is when you can learn from the mistakes of other people. I started out today's webinar with a few tips of the day, and I want to finish with a few lessons that I hope you've learned through this story about the three associations, Coastline Villas, Produce Heights, and Riverbend. And the first is that reserve contributions are not luxuries. Red sports cars and speedboats, those are luxuries. Paying your bills are not luxuries. The cost of reserve deterioration, that ongoing cost, that predictable ongoing cost of reserve deterioration is as real as any other bill the association faces. Those bills will come due. Those bills, those reserve contributions are not luxuries. And the budget decisions the board makes affects the home values of all owners in the association. You're not just talking about Mrs. Johnson in Unit 13 has a fixed income and we got to protect her because she can't afford it. Remember, that's not the board's problem. It's wonderful as humans to be compassionate, but the board's job is to run the association. Their job is to protect the home values of all, how many units in this association? Checking my notes, 70, sorry about that. 70 units, all 70 homeowners there at the association. What we learned from Coastline Villas is that by thinking the ongoing reserve contributions were too expensive, remember it's a $55 increase times 12 months times five years, do the math, that comes out to $3,300. So failing to spend that $3,300 led to a drop in home values of $17,500. So let me challenge you to flip those numbers around. How many of you, and think about this and give me another hands raised, how many of you would invest $3,300 in order to make $17,500? Given that choice, would you invest $3,300 to make $17,500? Boy, I do that all day, every day hopefully multiple times a day if I had the chance. Okay, I can put hands down. Okay, that's a wise move, and these are the types of wise decisions I hope to inspire you to make. And while it's nice to think you would fund your reserves adequately because reserve uh, consultants, reserve providers like us encourage you to fund your reserves adequately, the real reason to fund your reserves adequately is because it makes a good financial decision. It makes money for you. Uh, I have a friend that has a bumper sticker that says, think education is expensive, try ignorance. And of course, they're both school teachers, they're deeply invested in education, but I feel that same sentiment when it comes to reserve contributions. Underfunding is very expensive. Let's look at the reserve contribution magnitude. Remember what the total recommended reserve contributions were? They were about $71 per unit per month. Okay, let's divide that by 30 days, and that means it's a little over $2 a day. Now, it's safe for me to say that for our average condominium clients all across the United States, all 50 states, adequate reserve contributions for condominiums are about the cost of a premium cup of coffee per day. Now, in this case, you saw the numbers, it was a little bit less, $2 and some. But with the amount of premium coffee being sold across this country, it's pretty clear to me that a few dollars a day is pretty affordable, especially for a homeowner. Uh, the people at Coastline Villas that were saying we can't afford anymore, it's not that they couldn't, they chose. I bet so many homeowners at Coastline Villas were getting their Starbucks, Seattle's Best, um, all the other brands of coffee that you can get going to and from work. They're spending money in other places and not spending it on their home. Now, something I want to slow down and explain before I have to wrap up. Both Produce Heights and Riverbend made significant assessment increases. Both of those were bold, courageous moves. Now, the um, 
reading between the lines, it doesn't have to be that way. For most associations, it took many years and perhaps decades to get you into the reserve underfunding habits that you're in today. And that leaves you with your current status of a weak or a fair reserve fund. And you don't have to fix all those years of bad habits all at once. Uh, if you've been with us for prior webinars, as a number of you have, we've recommended a program called the $10 solution. That means if you can't increase your reserve contributions as high as recommended, increase them $10 per unit per month. Then do it again next year and the year after. For most associations, it's going to take three to five years to bring the reserve contribution rate up to where it needs to be. And any association can handle a $10 per unit per month increase. And again, that's 33 cents per day for your homeowners. And from that point forward, once you're on track, your association is going to be offsetting ongoing deterioration with appropriately sized reserve contributions. And the rewards are higher property values, shorter board meetings, lower liability exposure for the board members, all those good things. 30% of associations across the country are well-funded. I mentioned that at the very start. There's no reason your association can't be one of them in just three, four, or five years. So my encouragement, join the well-funded associations enjoying maximized property values. It's in your control. So remember, the decisions, the choices made by these three associations, Coastline Villas taking the cheap route, remember, because they thought they couldn't afford it, and that turned out to be the most expensive route of all three, Produce Heights and Riverbend, both took steps in the right direction, different size steps, Produce Heights partway there, Riverbend taking one giant courageous leap forward, and now that you've been to this webinar, you know that they don't have to make that big step all at once, you can go down the $10 solution path. Um, actually, most of you can, unless you have some real uh, stressful cash flow requirements. All I can do is point the way. It's up to you to decide if you want to come along. My job is to point the direction, give you a guide, a solution path, and you have the choice to be able to follow or not and how closely to the path you can follow. Well, I've covered a lot of ground today, but the concepts really are pretty simple. There's real value in budgeting adequately for the real ongoing cost of deterioration at your association. I want to leave you with some additional resources. You can go to www.reservesay.com where you'll find a great ebook download on this subject. And if you click over to a learning center, you'll find a library of written and video resources. Now, if you'd like our help with navigating a path to a successful future for your association, by all means, click the request a proposal button. And if you're not personally getting our regular email newsletters and invitations to webinars such as this one, by all means, sign up for our email list. That's the third arrow on the right. So at this point in time, I'll conclude my um, presentation and turn the microphone over to Paige, who will coordinate our Q&A time. Paige. Hey, thank you, Robert.